The lack of embracing of the wholeness of all of who we are and this disconnection from self and the resistance to our shadow sides is really the source of so much suffering. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I'm Deb Blum and this is the Inside Out Activism Show. So glad to have you here today. And I am so excited to welcome a three-time guest <laughs> on the Inside Out Activism Show. It's Tia Fagan. Hi, Three Tia. times. That's so awesome. I love it. I love, love it. I love talking with you. <laughs> I know. It's so great. I was, I actually was say, going to say, oh, there's, a, there's an interview that we just posted recently. It's called, Are You Listening? And it's right out there. And then I thought, no, the first one you were on was the sibling rivalry one. That's right. Yeah, the first right, one. Except posted. even though we did them in office, we, you know, right, we recorded right. flip. Yep. Recorded in a, in a different order, but the sibling yep. rivalry one came out first. And so you can, I will link those in the show notes. And so, so glad to have you here today. Um, before we get started, I mean, the, the, we're here today to talk about shadow work and the darkness. <clears throat> it's so exciting. And really what we're talking about is wholeness. Actually, mm -hmm. we're talking about wholeness, which is holding all of who we are. Mm -hmm. But what I'm excited about is that we have made a commitment to each other to not censor ourselves and to speak the whole truth of whatever it is right now in this moment is coming up for us. That's right. Which is very cool. Um, and, but what I do want to say is um, that I just want to also allow us the space to remember that mm -hmm. we are not necessarily going to be not everything that we say isn't going to necessarily be complete it's not going to be covering every possible nuance and it might be something that we even change our experience of in days months years as we learn about ourselves more and understand people and human beings and world the world and spirit more but right now we want to share at this moment in time what our experience is around shadow work, what our perceptions are in the world, what our own experiences with, with um, having done our work in shadow, the shadow work. So I guess maybe what we should do first is just get clear on what's shadow work. You want to like just share your perception of what, what um, shadow work is? Or maybe I mean, even before that, what's a shadow? What the right. heck is a shadow? <laughs> And it took me a while. I mean, and everyone has their own. I mean, there's a technical definition, right? I don't remember who it was. Carl Jung or somebody came up. Yeah, with Carl that. Jung is the person, the original thinker around yeah. shadow work. But for me, I mean, so not going down that technical route, for me, it's that embracing all parts of us, our darkness, which we hide. We've been taught to hide, the, you know, not just the negative feelings, but the darkness we all have that ability we all have that capability of the, the ugly parts of us that we don't want people to see but boy we can sure see it in other people so that window of invitation to your own shadow work is what you're judging in another person mm -hmm. because otherwise it wouldn't bring anything up in you so if you're saying that person's selfish or oh my gosh i can't believe how judgmental that person is it's because that's part of your shadow and it, that was a hard one for me, you know, when, wherever I was on my journey, where I started to realize, wait a minute, <laughs> that is a reflection back to me to go deeper and to go within, because who of us wants to admit, for me, a big one was, I'm a victim, you know, because I was like, that, I'm not a victim. I had that in my mind so hard and so deep that mm -hmm. I was not a victim. Mm -hmm. I could see victimhood around me, but that was not me. And I don't know how many years ago that was, maybe eight, nine, 10 years ago, when, whenever it showed up for me. And then all of a sudden it was like, that's in me. And to mm -hmm. me, victimhood was a big shadow, a big darkness. I didn't want to own up to because then I was weak. Yep. I was letting other people rule me. And I had that persona that that was not who I was. And so that shadow piece, and I love that you use the word wholeness because that to me, um, I'm not using the word as much as I used to, but I used to, a year or two ago, I said I was a wholeness coach. Mm. I mean, I still use the word wholeness a lot, but if we don't embrace our broken bits, our thorns, all of that, we are not authentic. You cannot be authentic if you don't embrace your darkness, which is why I love the yin-yang symbol, because it's 
complete. Yeah. And the darkness is what gives us <clears throat> the light and the contrast and the humanity. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So I can totally relate to the victim piece. I had, I had to have <laughs> someone who, one. I know I had to have someone who I really trusted a lot say to me, like, you know, at some point you are really going to have to embrace the victim mm-hmm. in you that you so reject in the world. Yeah. And, um, and that was like a really healing time and a really hard time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so interesting. So I got into shadow, get, doing my shadow work in a way that wasn't really, I didn't know that I was doing it. I was, um, yeah. I mean, because Byron Katie's work, the work, you yes. know, kind oh, of, yes. you know, goes into shadow stuff. If you, if you go, if you go into the turnarounds, right, exactly. You know, if you go into the turnarounds, you really get the experience of the shadow work. And I remember when I was first going through, so this was 12 years ago, I was in a really super hard part, place in my marriage. And I was a hundred percent believing my husband was responsible for all of my unhappiness. I mean, I was, there was no place in, in me. There were no cracks in my veneer of I'm good. You are the problem. Mm-hmm. And so we ended up in therapy, thank God. And we ended up with a therapist who was, who actually had been trained when Byron Katie had her big breakthrough awakening she was fr- my therapist was friends with her oh so wow she, so she's older and she she and then she was part of the literally like sitting around in a in a family room learning from Byron Katie amazing yeah so she brought in the work without me knowing it. She never, she never told us what we were doing, but I remember the fir- the one of the, this was a really um, profound memory of mine for some reason, because I, it was, this had to have been 10 years ago. We're sitting in therapy and I would just bring in a complaint about my husband, my poor husband. I don't even know how he tolerated this, but I would bring in a complaint and she would walk me through getting a more clear lens around the complaint. And one of mine was that he was materialistic. And I remember going in and just being so sure that this was, you know, a judgment that I was going to be like justified in. And, you know, this, can you believe this happened? And like, this is what he did. And this is how that happened. And she walked me through my experience of materialism in my own shadows around materialism. And I just remember I had like so many emotions. I had the emotion of like the, it was like part of my soul was like, finally you get it. But another part of me was so disappointed that that was the way life worked. You know, that like, that it's really my responsibility. That it's really on me to do my shadow work and that everyone outside of me is the most beautiful messenger to show me another part of me that I have rejected, disowned, abandoned, you know, whatever, give me any other word, right. you know, and that it's the, and so many of these things are the human condition. As you said, they're like, they're our humanity. Like we may not want to be a liar, mm-hmm. but lying is part of a survival mechanism, part of self-preservation. And it's, and it's so suppressed and so not a lot acknowledged that that's why we see so much dishonesty and deceit and lying in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all. We'll go into the (laughs) in a minute, but let's, let's stick with the, the personal experience. So, yeah. So, I love that. So I guess one of the questions though is like, why does a person even want to? Why, what value is there in doing shadow work? I, I mean, I can only speak for my own personal experience, of course. Um, for me, the shadow work was transformational. Like I don't, I think I would have hit a level and then I just would have stayed there thinking I was going and evolving, but I w- it would have been a falsity. It would have been, can you hear my dog is, is <laughs> incorporating his money. Um, <laughs> the dog's like, yeah. For yep. me, like the shadow work was like, like you said, as hard as it is, 
because it is really unpleasant and difficult. And I, it, it's not just the process, but it's the actual saying it out loud and like voicing that that's me. But once you do it, it's like, and I'm still the same person. Yeah. And now I can incorporate the shadow with the light. And that's where the beauty, that's where the beauty is because then we can have real empathy and compassion, not just for ourselves, but for others. Because then when, now when I see someone being a victim or a liar, it's like, okay, so they're, they're trying to protect that inner child, that, that inner wound. It's not done to me. They're doing it to themselves and protecting themselves. And so it allows me to be more human and more, I can connect now. I didn't understand what connect, and I, this is all coming to me right now. That's a huge part of connection. I talk with people a lot. It's like connection doesn't always feel good. And now I know why. It's because of the shadow work. It's because of that shadow work why I can am able to truly hold space for people and they feel held because I can sit with my shadow as they can step into and embrace their own. Because how can you embrace your shadow with someone who's ignoring their shadow? It's right. very difficult when you're in that healing work. That's why you, that woman held that space for you to do it. That's why one of my shadow work happened with a horse. Well, a horse can beautifully hold you that shadow workspace for you. I mean, she was like, honey, it's right here. Are you going to see it? 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 And it was like, no, no. And she's like, let me show you again in a different way, in a kind way. But a mm. horse isn't going to say something to me. So it was the space of allowing to feel it and have all that emotion come up so then I can share it with the world without feeling bad about that. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean I noticed the shadow and I was like, no, thank you for being here, but I'm not going to lie today because I don't need to, but I can make a choice now. I have more choice, which right. allows more authenticity. Right. Well, because when, when we ignore the shadow, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So what happens is that it just seeps out in these unconscious ways. Mm -hmm. and And also often we don't even acknowledge that we do the things that we're judging. You know, Byron K, I mean, um, Brene Brown says, yeah. she says that, you know, people judge something in another person that they do also, but the other person just does it a little bit worse. <laughs> and so, right. Is that not the truth? It's not like, you know, so there, there are multiple aspects of the shadow though, because there's the part which is that we all are everything kind of thing, right? right? So there's mm -hmm. that part that's just the, right. the human condition of that. Like, because, if, because we're all interconnected, we are everything. We have the potential for everything. Right. Every, even the really ugly. <laughs> even the really ugly. So whether you actually live that out in your life, like you may never you may make a commitment to always tell the truth, but if you, if you always tell the truth because you believe lying is so disdainful, like you, just, you have so much hatred toward lying, you actually still have not explored your shadow, right? Yes. So, you know, so I might choose to tell the truth right now, but I, have a beautiful loving relationship toward lying. I, I have deep compassion for my inner liar. Mm -hmm. I have deep compassion for you. I don't hold you to a standard that says, I know you'll never lie. I know that there are many factors in the reason why you may lie to me. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the tricky parts about the shadow for people, I think, is that there's a virtuous element to to like, you know, who, like we hold on to a cherished idea of who we are. Yes. And we're afraid that if we acknowledge to ourselves that we have these other kind of uglier parts that like you said, that will become them, which I know for me, my experience has been the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. The more I acknowledge them, the more that I actually become in choice in my life. Exactly. It's that choice.
It's the choice. And then there's also the other part that you said that I think is so beautiful and so true for me too, which is that the more that I come into acceptance of these pieces and parts of myself, whether they're ones I do act out in my life or they're ones that I don't or that I, or that I try really hard to hide, whatever, any one of these parts, the more that I can hold it for other people, the more that I'm in deep acceptance of other people. And that, and you're right, because like, if I'm with another person and that person hasn't, and I, am, and I have a shadow, and that is being reflected in another person who also hasn't done their shadow work, all I'm going to feel is judgment. Right. Whether they're even judging me or not, I'm just going to feel judgment. I'm going to feel a sense that I cannot bring that to the surface. Yep. But if I'm with another person who's done their shadow work in that space and they're so clear, it's practically like my shadow is being beckoned. Yes. To be like the, it's like there's like a flashlight that's like, let me just show you this part. And it's gentle and it's loving. I don't right. even find it to be as difficult as it was for the first, you know, 50 mm-hmm. things that I had to go through. Mm-hmm. You know, right. do you find that now it's so there are not not to say there aren't times when it comes up, but for the most part. And, and, and I know by saying that, yes, thank you. I will invite a very difficult shadow that I need to reveal cool. because of it. That's how it works, isn't it? It's like, okay. Let's give you another little hello. Oh, oh, Deb, you thought it got easy? Oh, okay. Let me show you. <laughs> I'll remind you. We're going to peel another layer back of that shadow for you today. Um, yeah, and I think having done that shadow work... Um, and again, I know I have shadows. I don't know. I mean, there's blind spots everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I and you don't, don't know what you don't know. Right. Don't think I'm sitting here like I've done my shadow work. I'm done. I am not. My shadow still shows up when I am tired and overwhelmed. The shadow comes out and, you know, it's like that person is doing it to me when we're in reality, I'm doing it to myself. So that's that piece when you, when it's always on the other that's an opportunity to look at your shadow. Like, what is the other doing to me? What, it's, it's the work. I love that you brought up the work, you know? So then you twist it. What am I doing to myself? How am I? And when you go there, it might not look pretty, but that's when we, you can hold and nurture that that pain, why that shadow has shown up for us in the first place. Did it show up when you were two years old? Did it show up? You know, did it come out and it was suppressed because your parents are like, no, I'm sorry, you can't talk to me like that and you will be grounded or whatever. Um, I mean, I have memories of don't talk that way. And then I had a friend who could talk that way with her mother and my mom didn't understand how this mother would allow her daughter to speak to her this way. And it was very confusing for me in that early adolescent because she was talking to her mom in a way that I never in a million years would, but I see now that that was her mom, probably not consciously, you know, probably who knows what the situation was at the time, but she was helping her daughter with her understanding her own shadows Mm. because it wasn't, that is unacceptable. Put it away. Right. Yeah. So, so Let's just go there for a moment because there is this piece of it like, well, how does a shadow get formed? You know, and I, I know that there's the shadow. I mean, there, there are some shadows that are just, it's more like a cultural, like a collective shadow oh, yeah. that, you know, we've all agreed to, like mm-hmm. that we're going to, we're all going to agree that like cheating on somebody is bad. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to suggest that we should be cheating on each other or that we should be lying to each other or whatever, you know, I, I'm not suggesting that, but. Um, but getting a a more nuanced relationship with it Mm -hmm. is helpful. So we have certain things that we've agreed to, and this goes back to the virtuous piece. Like there are certain ways of being in the world that are good. And there are certain ways in the being in the world that are bad. And depending on your worldview, I mean, literally even politically, depending on your, your political view, you will deter, you will, you know, deem certain things bad and certain things good. And so you will naturally put a bunch of those bad things into, you know, the box of the shadows. Right. And you will, yeah. And, and so, but shadows do get formed by also by our conditioning, by our childhood. And it doesn't make our parents wrong or bad. Um, I just think everyone, I think this is the kind of stuff that drives me crazy. Like why we don't teach this stuff 
in, in school because no parent or very few parents are going to raise their children and not create any shadows. You know, sometimes it's not out of, possible. it's not possible. Yeah. And the key in my mind is to model doing our own inner work such that our children then learn how to be doing their own inner work because life is just going to constantly show you all of these places. And if you know how to do your shadow work and you know how to actually take a look at these parts that are being activated in you, mm -hmm. then you have a lifelong tool. Right. You know, you and don't... it's not just parents who create the shadows. Totally. Right. I mean, <laughs> teachers, society, the woman in the grocery store line who gives your kid a dirty look when they're having a tantrum. I mean, yep. so we have to take the pressure off parents of thinking that, oh, I'm going to hurt my child. I'm going to do all these things because then we are creating more shadows in that parent because then they're afraid to even say anything because they're going to do the wrong thing or whatever. But it's like you said, it's modeling because the person at the grocery store can say something at that right time, at that sensitive moment to me, to my kid, to whomever, and now a shadow has just been nurtured. Yep. So to think we can raise kids in isolation and have no shadows is not going to happen. That's, it's not the human experience. And so how can we navigate life with the modeling of our own shadow work and also understanding shadows are who we are as well. Yeah. It's just whether the shadow is known or unknown. Is it embraced and integrated or is it shunned and put in that little box because the world says it's wrong and I can never ever show that part of me. And then that creates that whole other cycle yeah. of stuff that can show up for an individual because it's different for everybody. Yeah. Well, and you know, like Dr. Gabor Mate talks about the idea that like, you know, we, we often as in childhood, we get told that we can either, we basically, we don't get told with words, but we're, you know, usually having to sacrifice our authenticity for acceptance yep. and detachment. And because of that, um, we, we do put all those things into a shadow I mean, into the shadows, they're kind of banished into the darkness. And, you know, I, I listened to this guy talk one time and he talked about it from this perspective, which, you know, when people talk about baggage, yep. you know, I think that um, in some ways that's exactly what happens. It's like, you know, you've got a bag in, and you, what you do is every part that you, anyone has deemed is not good, you know, right. it's, it doesn't get you the approval and the love and the connection, you stick it into the bag. Well, you know, you're walking around carrying this bag. If there's nothing else that shadow work, I think, does for people is it just lightens our load. You know, it lightens that load. Like we can take that part and then put it into ourselves. We put each part. It's like, you know, and sometimes I tell people you're a 10,000 piece puzzle. And every single time that you get told, and it doesn't even have to be verbally, it could be all kinds of subtle things. The person looking at you at the grocery store, that that's not an acceptable way of being you take a puzzle piece out and you put it into your bag and it's gone. It's, you know, back here. Uh, what happens is what happened to me is at 39 years old, I looked down at my puzzle. I, and I was unrecognizable. Right. I, there's no, there was no me anymore. I was this fragmented per like thing that was, had all these missing pieces of like who I wasn't supposed to be. And then that's what this journey has been for me is this putting the puzzle pieces back in and me going, Oh my God, Oh my God, it feels so good. It's like Humpty Dumpty, you know? So like, you know, you, we have to get all of our pieces put back together. They're all there. We all have them. So it's like, oh. you know, so it's wholeness. it's wholeness, it's wholeness. You know, and I think the more we can put those puzzle pieces back in, the dark ones, the gray ones, the stormy ones, whatever they are. I mean, look at what Starry Night, you know, that image of it's all oh, this darkness, um, but yeah. there's little bits of light. So you put those in there and those shadows become part of who we are. And I, I, I use the analogy of the back of the bus. So it's, is it driving, are there shadows driving the bus and you aren't even aware? Mm. Or is the shadow sitting next to you and you're driving, but it's just, poking you and going, yep, 
I'm just, you're just taking me along for the ride, but I don't have to drive it. Now it may grab the wheel every now and then when we're off kilter and that's okay because it's like, okay, thank you for the reminder that you're part of who I am and my humanity. And so when I see that shadow in another, I have compassion yeah. instead of judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and not judgment's and, not a shadow too, but <laughs> right. Well, judge. Well, and the beautiful thing right. is that, so I tell people that like, don't do not stop judging. Mm-hmm. Do not stop judging because it is in the judgment that you do get to see your shadow. Right. If you didn't, you said, you said, um, I asked on the inside out Act- activist Facebook group, if you could teach teens one thing, what would it be? And you responded, what you complain about in another is, is within you. Mm-hmm. And so it, so I don't complain as much about people as I used to. I didn't have to stop complaining. I just don't complain about them as much. And as soon as I complain about somebody, I literally, no joke, pull out my journal as soon as I get a chance and I write something, I'll either write on the top of the page, something I need to love about myself. And I'll write the mm-hmm. thing that I was saying, or recently, like I literally just wrote just a couple of days ago, I wrote, um, I wrote something about a, a friend. And then at the bottom of the page, I wrote each thing about her that I was judging. And then I wrote, where is that in me? Mm. And each one I wrote, where is that in me? Every single one of them, I kept writing it because I don't even have to do a lot of work on it. I just have to invite it. I have to be like questioning and curious, like, oh, you know what? Every time I judge, every time I complain about somebody, it's just great information about places in me that need a little love and attention and some, some like awareness. Right. And when we judge or however it shows up for a person, if we can look at the perspective and shift it and be like, this is just another opportunity for me to go within. Totally. An opportunity. That's all it is. Because if we avoid that or be like, Oh, I don't want to be a judgment judgmental person that then you're putting that shadow back in its box because you're not going to get rid of judgment. That is who we are inherently as humans, because we're trying to belong. We're trying to fit in and understand. And not all judgment is meant as a criticism even, you know, like, so you notice those judgments you were having and it's like, okay, now I invite that. Where is that within me? So how is that wrong? (laughs) Right. No, it's a, it's a, here's a lesson. Here's a chance for me to practice my own inner work again. Right. Right. Isn't it amazing? amazing. Well, right. (laughs) So if we, (laughs) it's amazing because it really is. I mean, it's like the, it's like this, you know, you say that, uh, you know, judgment, we're not going to stop judging because we want to belong. Well, I actually just wonder if it was just another one of the masterful ways that we were created that, you know, we know that I cannot see me without looking in the mirror right? I can't, like, if I want to look at my face, I literally either have to be on a Zoom call or I have to go right. look in a mirror. I cannot do it. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm trying really hard, but I can't see. <laughs> yes. you know? And so I can't see my inner experience unless it's reflected in other people. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, how, how else would I do my inner work? How else would I do it? I wouldn't even be able to if I didn't have the amazing people in my life being that which is within me. Right. And so I actually look at it and say, like, how can we get to the place where we are so grateful? There's so much around us taking things personally, you know, and that like, and really anything that anyone says or does, it's generally, it's really them. It's their stuff. They're going through their own, you know, trying to meet their own needs and trying to hide their shadows and right please you or or you know defend their hearts you know and and then what the way we react is our stuff exactly it's that whole first arrow second arrow right you want to explain that so the first arrow is um like whatever happened with you you know and so in your mind he shot this first arrow at you and then you have the choice to shoot yourself 
yeah. or recognize, wait a minute, that's the other. What's the reflection for me? Yeah. Do I choose to take that feeling, that trigger of that first arrow? And do I choose to create a story around it and have the shadow come up or have this and go over here? Or do I choose to have that first arrow feel what I'm feeling? You know, what am I feeling? What am I noticing? What are my thoughts? What are my beliefs? What is showing up for me? And then it goes away because it's never the other. That first arrow that's being shot at you is really not the other. It's more that here's that invitation. So instead of thinking it as an arrow, think of it as a love letter. Here you go. I know. You want to open this letter and learn more about yourself. It's like Cupid. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. I, so I think that's so true. And, and when we, and I, and I, I love that um, description because I think it's exactly what happens. And I think that, one thing I'll just say is in the beginning it was very hard for me to really believe that it was all about me and not about the other person. And so what I encourage people to do is you don't have to believe that mm -hmm. meaning you can hold on to that. There's some place in this that they have fault. It's okay. But ultimately what you have to do is before you're ready to talk to that person, you do need to actually get a clear lens. You don't want to come from the place of your shadows. So that's why, like, ultimately, it doesn't mean that someone might do something. I have a reaction and I still might end up determining that I have to set a boundary with that person. Exactly. And that person might need, I might need to say like, hey, that was not okay. Mm -hmm. But the, the question is, do I come in and shoot them with an arrow? Yep. And just kind of like react, or do I come back to wait a second? What's my part? Mm -hmm. What's going on in me? And then when I go to them, I actually come from a place of an elevated consciousness, greater awareness, self-awareness and compassion for them. Right. Right. And I think I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, there's two things, the co-creation piece, but before I go about that, it's recognizing that they can People can, that can still be rude. They can still be disrespectful. Right. They still can have, they can still say something to you in a way that isn't okay, that crosses that boundary. So, right. so while it, and I think that's a piece that sometimes people miss in this is like, oh, it's always me. It's always me. It's all, and that doesn't mean the person it's understanding where they're coming from, but then we have that choice. Do we let our shadow take over without conscious. Do, it comes back to what we talked about a little while ago. It's that we now, knowing our shadow, we have a choice. So we can still say, I'm not okay with how you treated me. I mean, an abusive situation, okay? Talk about a lot of stuff. It's not okay for someone to abuse you, but still <laughs> you have, there's a co-creation, there's an understanding there, not that you, that's a whole nother thing, but understanding that okay, what's <laughs> right. the shadow in me and how do I choose to respond? And as you do that shadow work in an abusive situation, you now have the strength and the power to hold and create that boundary and walk away. Right. Uh, because without doing the shadow work, that's why often people do stay in a perpetually bad mm -hmm. situation because there is a way that it's all like murky and, and tangled inside. But when we start to do the shadow work and we can separate ourselves from the other person, yep, we can separate, and, right? We get much more clear. We get clear on what we will and will not accept. And in fact, I would make the, I would make the, um, the argument that when a person does shadow work and only comes from the place of that everything is mine, Mm -hmm. which is what I did in the beginning with Byron Katie work. I just looked at it and like, everything is mine. Oh my gosh. And, and by the way, let me just one quick caveat. It's not about blame. Mm -mm. It's about responsibility. It's yeah. really, you know what I mean? And, and the, yeah. the, it's, it's not about blame. Like, in fact, it's not about blame of anyone. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, that's right. That's another um, uh, indicator. As soon as we blame, as soon as we blame, judge, complain, criticize any of those things are all like they're messengers or as I call them trailheads they're mm -hmm. trailheads back to home to yourself yes but it's not blame it's responsibility it's the ability to respond really that's what responsibility is like the ability to respond right. and the the messy part for people a lot of people the most courageous scariest part 
is to go back once you have clarity and you actually say, that's not going to work for me anymore. You know, I used to tolerate when you did that with me mm-hmm. because I used to be coming from the shadow place. I used to feel like my inner child was being hurt by it. But now I'm coming in as a much more adult aware person. And I'm saying, that's a no for me now. Yes, That's the part of shadow work that I really believe is the one that often doesn't get discussed. It's the part, it's like, you know, yeah, like go in and examine your shadow, but it's like, no, no, no. But now what does that actually mean in the world? Yes. And that comes back to the whole thing we had, before you start recording, we're talking about it's the action we can do either read or do these things, but not take the action steps. And, you know, and everyone's where they're at uh, yeah, on their journey. So you can start the shadow work, but then what do you do after you have identified your shadow or had that person come at you with this and you recognize, here's my boundary, here's my choice, here's my response. Because if that's the next level and that is where you really integrate it because then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have the ability to shift this co-creation. I have the ability. And knowing when you come back with that, this is a no for me, you are going to get more pushback, but because you're under, and you may not, but oftentimes you do get people like, I don't don't like that. You're changing the rules on me. I'm going to, I'm going to keep poking and I'm going to, I'm going to find another shadow I can poke at at you. And, but you recognize it's like, it's so clear. And that doesn't mean that there's not times where it's like, Oh, I feel like I'm such a bad person and I really want to, this doesn't feel good anymore because I'm disappointing them. I'm speaking from personal experience. Me too. <laughs> um, but then I come back to, no, <laughs> I am no longer okay with doing that role anymore. I'm no longer okay with letting my shadow and my worry or my this, that, or whatever is showing up, whatever shadow, it's not okay anymore. Yeah. And that is another love letter back to that person to say, I believe that if you choose to, you can do your own shadow work too. Because when we take it on, we're telling them you can't handle your own shadow work or we, or we do our own, but then we don't put the boundary in place. That's another layer of the shadow, but it's like, I trust that you can do your work too now. Yep. You're right. And so it's like an infantilizing of them. It's Mm -hmm. basically saying, you know, you can't handle it. I can handle this. So I'll take on more than my share of responsibility because I don't, because I'm trying to protect you. And then nobody, and then what we ultimately need is, is to allow each of us to stand in our sovereign being Mm -hmm. and have trust in each other. But I will say that over the years, you know, we talked before and I'll just, I'll say the two of us acknowledged that we spent many, many years doing work by like reading the Byron Katie book and reading. I mean, that wasn't a good example because I didn't know I did Byron Katie work before I did it, but reading the but yeah. books, reading. Eckhart Tolle. Okay, totally right. Not incorporating it into our actual lives, just mm-hmm. like letting it seep into our being. And every, that is a stage that everyone goes through. And I also think with shadow work that a stage that we go through is the part where it, actually I remember it feeling like an excuse that I didn't have to confront difficult situations because I was like, well, it's always me. It's always me. So I I don't even have to confront that situation. I don't even have. And then I was like, my conflict avoider loved that. And my people, my conflict avoider and people pleaser was like, yeah, you don't have to talk to anyone about anything difficult ever again. It's right. Awesome. That's right. Oh, I was there for a while. Yeah. (laughs) That was a long stage. (laughs) A really long stage because it required so much courage to start to have those conversations that you said, the ones, but they're the ones that, so I kind of think the ultimately the deepest, deepest wound we all have is Mm self-abandonment. That's the deepest wound. Like if we can connect back to ourselves, to our truth of what's like, why we're here, that we're part of this bigger entity Mm -hmm. that, you know, we are important the more we come back and we integrate all these puzzle pieces and we become more whole, the, the key thing here is that um, ultimately it is truly a Humpty Dumpty experience. Like we fell apart, you know, we, we have all these pieces and now we're putting them all back together 
Yes. And, but the key, the thing that happens is the more authentic we become, the more we are all put together, the, the more that it becomes impossible to show up and play a role in another person's life that is out of integrity with mm-hmm. yourself. And that's the, right? And that's the invitation, this one that we have to get into the action. But it is definitely, the, the things I had to get comfortable with, I'll concur with you, is like knowing that I'm going to disappoint other people. Mm-hmm. Knowing that. Knowing that people wish that I would just play the freaking part that I've been playing. Yep. And they're upset with me. And then for the first time in the past couple of years, I've had to, I haven't actually broken up with friends, but I have had to let people go in a way that felt really right for me. Like I I used to be like, really? Like you can't work through everything. Like if it's all me, I should be able to work through everything. And then I realized, no, actually there are people who aren't good for me. Like they're, mm-hmm. it's not a shadow. Mm-mm. It's actually, you know, we're not, we're no longer aligned. That doesn't mean we won't be aligned in the future again. Exactly. Because right we don't now, know. We have we no idea. Know. No. We don't know. But, but that doesn't, and that's that ability to recognize, I don't think any lesser of best person. No. At all. It's just that right now we're not at the same what a vibration, whatever you want to term it. And it's not a judgment piece, but it's, I'm not serving you anymore. You're not serving me in this relationship anymore. I, I think we need to hear, yeah. and we may come back together. We don't know. Yep. Totally. We never know, but it's not, it's, it's a loving, I think it's a loving thing to do that. I think it is too, because, you know, I have had a couple of situations where I know that I've been just, I've been almost pushing the other person too hard. Mm-hmm. to like be somebody that they're not and by letting them go I get I let them like this is your this is your path like I'm not here to like get you to do this I, I was trying but I know and there's something you just said um oh I was just going to say that also I remember times in my shadow work stages of my shadow work where I couldn't be with certain people because they were bringing up my shadow too powerfully and that's okay too like there are times, like I, I have clients who will say to me, but I can't be with them. Like I'm just constantly triggered with them. I'm like, it's okay. You know, part of me is like, well, you're going to miss an opportunity, but don't worry. You'll get another one in the future. Right. And it might be a little bit easier of a one for you to tolerate. You know, you might be able to see it more clearly. This person might be delivering the information in a way that just doesn't work for you. <laughs> right. Or maybe they're accessing too many shadows. Mm-hmm. And I only can focus on one right now. Like right. You're, tra- you're activating three shadows and they may be all interconnected and maybe a different person would, could access those three in a way that I could access all of them. But yeah, I, I need to focus on one right now. I mean, it's yeah. not, con- you know, you don't recognize this necessarily. No, no you basically just want to run away from them. Right. It's too much. <laughs> that's okay. But that's also taking care of yourself and recognizing what I like about- As long what, as you continue the work. That's what I was just going to say. So what I'm seeing here, what's, what I love about this conversation is that it's really honoring the nuance of it and saying there isn't really a wrong way. The, it's not a wrong way as long as you are doing the work is the key thing. But if you decide this particular way, is just like so painful for me and I'm not ready to deal with it. It's okay to pause. It's okay to hibernate. It's okay to, you know, distract yourself. There's nothing wrong. Just, it's just knowing like, and there are times when I'm in deep work and I need to go watch a Netflix show just to give my brain and my being a break because I'm so deep in something Mm -hmm. none of this is wrong or bad. It's just more information. It's just, Oh, thank you. Oh yeah. Look at me eating junk food. Oh yes. I wonder what I'm distracting myself (laughs) from today. (laughs) I'm choosing to distract myself today because I really need a break. I need a mental, because sometimes we do. Sometimes we need that break. Um, I've had an experience where I knew it. there was a shadow. This was a couple of years ago that was right there. And it was like, I don't have the bandwidth right now to deal with the shadow. I just don't right now. And I set it aside for over a year. Yeah. You know, it kept showing up and I kept saying, thank you. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm going to work on that. I'm, I'm going to just go a little deeper with this one, a little more integration on this one. I'm not ready for that big one. Um, 
but it was a conscious choice. Just like I'm going to binge on Netflix right now because I need a break. It's the same type of thing. And that's okay too, but come back and revisit. Come back. It's right. It's not about uh, like getting into the, I spent so many years numb. I don't ever want to do that again, you know? And so it's okay for me to numb myself for periods of time, like, you know, a couple of hours or even I, I really, um, I appreciate the permission that sometimes you can just say it's just not the right timing. And I think that at some level we know that. And there's a, there's like, I like to use the word like fortify because sometimes I do need to, like you said, like focus on the integration. And that's, that's another word I use too. It's like, I sometimes have to fortify some other part of me before I'm ready to really dive deep into this. So I know I have layers, like I have invitations and yeah. that's what you had. You had an invitation and you were like, thank you, but not yet. I have invitations that will happen for months before I choose to actually go into them often. Right. You know, and it's being, I'm being worked. Like I'm being worked by that shadow mm-hmm. on an unconscious, subconscious level. I'm being worked. Yes. But then eventually I'm ready to go, okay, I'm now, I'm now willing to actually see this thing. And go deep. And, and go really deep. really understand it versus... It's kind of, it kind of comes back to that reading those books, reading all that at the beginning. It's the same potentially with a lot of our shadows. We're doing, we're reading the books about our shadows, not reading the books, but like the experiences, yeah. I notice you, I notice you, I notice you. It's percolating. It's, it's the foundation is getting built for us to have the strength to go and okay, now let me befriend the shadow. Now let me understand you. Why did you show up in my life in this way? What mm. is the story that you are here to teach me now? Yeah. And what's the story you're going to teach me in two years about the shadow? Because, and like you said at the beginning, we're talking about our experience right now. We're going to look at this conversation in 10 years and go, oh, oh. now look what we know. We're going to say, oh, we've we experienced. Were so, it's, right, like, you're so cute. I know. You were so cute, Ben. <laughs> I thought you knew so much. <laughs> Exactly. But it's great. It's, it's, I'm in agreement on everything you're saying. I think it's so spot on and it's so much the, it's the beauty. I, I, sometimes I just look and I say to people, if you just, if you would like look behind the veil and see that like all the things we're doing to protect ourselves. But if you, if you're willing to go in there, oh, life is so freaking beautiful. It's like the little man behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz. Yep. Yep. There's our little shadow right there. I know, but we're afraid. All right. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to talk for a few minutes about one more thing before we wrap up. All right. So let's talk about what something I know you and I both are seeing. Okay. Which is, so so let's have another conversation in the future, uh, maybe even deeper about like the collective conscious consciousness and and all of that but there is this collective shadow Mm. there is a shadow that we are all we do there are ways that we all buy into similar kind of a a theme and a story and one of the things that can happen is that we can buy into a theme it can be something like a, a story about teenagers teenagers are annoying they're just and when we kind of drink in the kool aid we believe that but we can also do it around political parties or you know, around the president. And Mm -hmm. sometimes I think what happens is when we put it on a group, when we make it like a collective shadow and we put it on a group, we then, even people who have done the deepest shadow work feel justified. Yes. Because, well, if 4 million people believe this, it must be right. Mm -hmm. And so I see that there are all these opportunities that are missed because we're looking out into the world and we have all these people who corroborate our worldview. Right. And then we miss the opportunity to do our shadow work. Exactly. And I'll go one step further and then I want to hear what your thoughts are on it, which is, and my feeling is the, the, the whole premise behind inside out activism is that as long as we carry that judgment in our hearts, as long as we have that divide in our hearts, the part where we keep ourselves not looking at that part of ourselves, it is going to show up in the collective. There is no possible way we can change from the outside in on this. 
This mm -hmm. requires each one of us to look at our individual shadow mm -hmm. and say, lying, okay, deceit, okay, greed, okay, you know, manipulation, okay, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. it is, you know, even like hatred of men, hatred of women, hatred of whatever, you know, certain groups of people, all of these pieces, they require us to do our own inner work. So what, what the heck, girl? What's going on? What do we do? Yeah. All we can do is our own work, right? I mean, you know, because it feels good to be part of this collective and be in this complaining mode. I mean, I've gotten sucked into it from time to time. Don't get me wrong. Um, but then I, I do, I notice that and then I'm like, I don't want to talk about this, right? I, you know, not in a, I don't want to talk about this avoidance, but in a, I am not going to, I'm not going to take the invitation to go in and just continue the same pattern. So when I notice that, then I'm like, go back, go back within, go back within and talk about, Hey, have you ever thought about, or, Hey, I noticed, you know, Hey, I have empathy for that. Can you imagine having grown up and lived that life that this is what you are projecting out into the world? And this is how you're trying to bring in masses to make you feel better, how much pain could this person be in? Or yeah. how much whatever, you know? I mean, it's like, it comes back to us. I know. And it's the ripple. Now that doesn't mean we don't fall into the collective because it's a comfortable place to be, right? And we, we choose our collective because there's several collectives. Oh, I feel great with this collective on this topic and this collective on that topic and this one and that one. Um, do they all overlap? Not always. Sometimes right. they do, but the bottom line is I have a choice. Mm. I can step in and step out. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, I need, the, I need to feel the same as another and be accepted and whatever, whatever you, your need is in that moment. But then I have a choice. I don't have to follow that path. I want to think for myself. Yeah. I want to notice why am I wanting to go into that collective? What is drawing me there? Oh, interesting. You know, and a lot of it comes back, like you said, that, that inner one, that self-abandonment. I'm abandoning myself when I step into that collective if I haven't done the work. Yes. I may fully agree with the collective after I've done my work, <laughs> meaning this is where, you know, the path is taking me. It doesn't mean I follow in line with every little checkbox. But if I don't do that work and that understanding and that knowing, and hey, I want to be an activist in this area because this piece feels really good for me, then I'm not being authentic. Then I'm not choosing. Yeah. I'm not, I haven't done the work. It's just not more opportunities, right? There's it's those just personal individual relationship opportunities, and then there's the collective opportunities. Right, right. But I think that the collective opportunities, I think that it's, it gets trickier and murkier. I mean, it started out with the individual and anyone who hasn't done their shadow work will know that obviously like it's much easier to blame another person. It's much right. easier to project out there. It's much easier, but you'll never get the relationships you want. You'll never have the inner peace that you want. You'll never feel the sense of contentment and joy that you want as long as you externalize. Because when you externalize the, the, the deepest source of the pain is in the self-abandonment. It's not the, it looks like it's the, like, oh, my husband's hurting me and he did this and he did that. But it's actually the deepest source of pain is the self-abandonment. And, and by the way, like, I will say one thing is that people often will say, you know, oh, well, but don't we need people? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, you know, first of all, we need people to help us to grow, but we also do need people. I believe we do need validation and love too. Right. But it, it's uh, what I notice is the more that I love myself, the more parts of myself that I have integrated, the more I validate myself, the more the world just reflects that for me. And I am accepted and I am loved and I am. So it's like, it goes back to this, the original point about, you know, it's, it's showing up in the outside world. Well, whatever my inner terrain is, if I am lacking in self-love, that is what I'm going to see in the world. Right. You know, it's not just your shadows in the sense of these like compartmentalized pieces. If I have a pervasive lack of self-love, I will find that there is a lack of love 
in my life. And then one other point I'll make about it, that doesn't mean that you don't do that through healing. You talked about like, you know, if, you're, if your client is with you and you're, you're deeply accepting of yourself and you've done your shadow work, you'll be able to hold that for them. That is part of what we need to do is heal in relationship with other people. Right. It's messy. Right. <laughs> and I love, you know, the whole inner terrain piece is you're going to reflect back and you're still going to get some of the muck. <laughs> Because not everyone is going to be able to reflect black love to you, but you have that inner connection to yourself that you can see that that is not about you. Because yeah. I think that that's another common myth that happens when you awaken and you become conscious, you attract everything that you are on the inside. Mm. Not always, you know, your relationships will change. Everything will change. Well, like your experience, you know, that friendship was no longer working. Right. But you have an inner peace with that understanding of, oh, that person is reflecting back something negative. It's not the self-love that I have for myself, but I don't, it's not personal. Right. So I think that's something that people who are helping people guide on the path have to be very careful with. Because I've heard that from so many spiritual teachers. And yeah. that... I, that has not been my experience. That's not what I teach people. It's that you will attract and you will start to create relationships more in line with your inner terrain. But that doesn't mean everything else, that collectiveness is cleaned up. <laughs> right. So. Right. That's a, it's a great reminder. So thank you for saying that because it's a really great reminder. And even like when I think about more specifics about my experience, right, it's not even that everything is so perfect and everybody loves me just the way that I want. I have plenty of work to do still in my marriage to get, you know, to have our relationship be even more amazing and intimately connected. Um, but it's that, it's that discernment. It's that clarity of what's mine and what's someone else's. Mm -hmm. That is the piece that I, it's like, um, I can no longer live misaligned yes. with truth and love. And so when someone else is coming into relationship with me and they aren't aligned there, or they want me to align with their worldview, mm -hmm. it's so clear to me now that if I do that, I will abandon myself. So I basically am in a situation yeah. like if you put me in a situation where I have to either choose you or me, I will always choose me. Mm -hmm. And that's not selfish. That's mm -hmm. actually the most loving thing I can possibly do because I am coming at it. It's like, okay, well, so wait, I can either choose to be in your fear pattern right? or I can choose to be aligned with love and truth. And, and I realize that can sound so love and lighty kind of woo woo. It's really not. It's actually some of the most, it's actually some of the hardest decisions I've had to make in my life mm -hmm. are, it's not like I do them lightly. I don't just blow a person off. It's, I spend a lot of time when someone's asking me to join in their worldview and I know that I'm going to disappoint them. I spend a lot of time often in a lot of deep angst over what's my obligation? What's, right. you know, like this is a friend. Should I do this for them? It would be easy to do that for them, but it seems like it's misaligned with, with being in integrity with me and with mm -hmm. love and with, truth and so it's not like I just have like this like boom my discernment's just like oh I'm just like sometimes sometimes it's super clear a lot of times it's really painful and really hard because we're still humans right and isn't that the beauty though it is so beautiful I don't want sunshine and rainbows all the time mm -mm. I don't <laughs> no even no. if I could have it I wouldn't want it right Cause I need, I need the gray and I need the rain and I need that. I, otherwise, how are you living an experience, a fully experienced life? If all you have is joy. I mean, and that's that false, then you're not integrated. You're not integrated. You know, you it's funny. Your puzzle pieces. I, right. You don't know all your puzzle pieces. And it's like, you know, if my puzzle, if I have decided that part of my puzzle I'm just going to like keep out of there. I will never feel that fullness. And I think, I can't remember who it is that said this, but somebody said, you know, it's a simple thing, but it's, and it seems so obvious, but um, aliveness, wholeness equals aliveness. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I have, have come to see. You know, when you talk about the sunshine and, you know, it's funny because over the past four years, I live in California where all winter long, we're, we're often experiencing Northern California rain. Mm -hmm. I have come to love rain so much mm -hmm. that I almost, I almost am like, I can, I'm hungry for it. Like I'm actually hungry for rain and I will get up in the middle of the night sometimes and sit with my, my doors open and just sit and be with the darkness and be with the rain. And I never, until you just started talking about it, realized that's a metaphor for me embracing the darkness wow. and the, you know, so-called bad rain, right? like the bad weather. And how for me, I can be awakened in the middle of the night to just go sit and just take it in because it just feels so good. I love it. Yeah. That might be a good, way, good place to end. It is really sweet. This has been, who knew that we could talk about darkness and shadows with really so much love and endearment? Like I, right? Yeah. You know? But that's the beauty. It's, of the dark of the, it's it is right it is the beauty of the dark i love it oh my god i really think that there there are so many places we could go into even deeper um but this seems like this was really good and yeah. i just want i want to leave people with one final thought and i'll encourage you to leave people with a final thought as well but one is just um the 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 lack of embracing of the wholeness of all of who we are and this disconnection from self and the resistance to our shadow sides is really the source of so much suffering. Mm -hmm. And if we can begin to see that we don't have to carry the burdens of everyone else's wrongdoings and hold on to righteousness, that isn't the path. The path is not to hold on to righteousness and continue to be a virtuous being that only does good in the world and rejects all that is bad. The path is genuinely to come into the deepest, deepest acceptance of all of who we are, all of all humans, all of the collective, and to bring it in to the yin yang, the, the wholeness, the frequency of, of all of it. And the masculine, the feminine, every contrasting thing, the rain, the sun, the clouds, whatever, the gray, it's truly, I mean, isn't light, isn't white all colors? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the whole thing of white? Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk yeah. about like bringing in light, like white light, that is all. And so it's like the harshest and most loving message I can give is to stop with the with, with the idea that like you can only be good yep. and that we reject all that isn't and, and explore this, get curious about mm -hmm. the concept. There's Debbie Ford. She's yeah. since died, but she's got a great book, the dark side of the light chasers. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Light. Yeah. Light chaser. Darkness of the light chasers. Dark or, side of the light yeah, chasers. Something yeah. like that or darkness. I have, of one, I have one of her quotes on my website actually. Yeah. I can't, oh. can't remember the exact verbiage right now, but yeah. She's so good. And you know, Carolyn Mace just did a did something about darkness to like a video. You can get it on audible.com. Panash Desai talks about shadow work. Carl Jung, you can go right to the source. But there are all places that you can go to to, to begin to explore this work around the shadow. Mm -hmm. And it's going to push every edge of what you believe is true and right in the world. And it will require you to move away from blame, criticism, shaming, you know, complaining, all of those things into personal responsibility, but it is the only path I have seen. And that I really feel, I mean, everyone will find their own way, but the only path is really to own all of all parts of ourselves. Right. So with that said, I would love to leave it, you know, to Tia for you to, you know, what are your final parting words of wisdom? I don't have much to add to what you did. I mean, it's just embrace and integrate you know don't run from the ugliness that we that the world tells us is ugly in us jump in lean into it 
you know, if it, if it's teeny tiny baby steps and that's all you can do, start there. Cause it's scary and it's hard, but you know what? You're not alone. There's lots of people doing this work and reach out to somebody who is, or, or, you know, get on the inside out activist website or Facebook page. Seriously. Okay. I mean, cause we'll be there with you. We're still doing it. This is, we're not done. We're not done. We're never going to be done. And, but just enjoy that darkness. Mm. Totally. Thank you. And yeah, and anyone who has got, has started on this path, I don't know anybody who wishes to go back to the other way of living, you know, even if it's hard, even if they are met with some difficult times. And I find that, you know, these days it's just, it's not quite as hard as it felt for a period of time. I do think we get into a rhythm with it and it feels like I, it's much more painful for me to sit and blame and complaining than it is for me to now sit in personal responsibility. I mean, like, like light years difference. Yep. Between us. You may go there, but that's like, oh, okay, now it's time to come back. Right. Right. I need to come back every time. Every time. Yep. Totally. This has been so fun. You're it's so great. So it's fun. just so, so great to talk to you about it. I love that we're so aligned. And yet also I liked that you helped to, you know, find places that were, you know, that we needed to complete my thoughts and, and vice versa. So vice versa, definitely. Really oh. all right. Thank you so much. And anyone, I just want to just ask people to, um, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with other people. And um, always we appreciate when you like it because it does help. And I think other people, when they look in their likes, they're more inspired to listen to it. So if you actually genuinely liked it, don't do anything inauthentic. You can <laughs> just like it. Um, engage in the comments, like pop in what your thoughts are in the comments below and we'll engage with you. And um, as always, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified, click the bell. And it has been great. Thank you, Tia. It's awesome to be with you as always. And thank you, yeah. everyone. Thanks so much.